all the right answers. We have an extended period of time lasting for decades so far in which the evolution creation controversy has been on cutting edge debate. And we have an academic posture in the educational system that essentially rules out even a mention of intelligent design and specifically a reference to a specific creator. And uh, thus we have an impasse and the imperialized dogma has stated, because its imperial mandate has stated, that it must be naturalistic. However, the answers are still missing. You see, there's empirical science where you run field examination and laboratory experiments to see what really is there. Then there's imperial dogma that is often superimposed to determine that you can't use all the data. You have to isolate everything to a naturalistic interpretation, no matter how much it appears to be complex and designed by an intelligent source, and especially with a capital S. So today's program is all the right answers. In order for living systems to work, everything must be in place simultaneously. The living cell requires not only the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid, requires not only the RNA, the protein synthesis factory, and the uh, energizing apparatus, it requires a membrane, it requires the proteins to all be in place so that the transfer of that information in the dividing of the cellular structure can produce an organism. But if all of this is not in place and functional, it begins to biodegrade very rapidly. The evolutionist, and I again used to be in that camp as those who watch the program regularly know, the evolutionist asked for billions of years of evolutionary time, tens of billions of years of evolutionary time in order to get one single spark of life. Well now, time is not the friend of the evolutionist. For living systems, even if you did get the amino acids, uh, which will not form naturally in a left-handed configuration, life uses only left-handed amino acids. Uh, they form together left and right-handed, and it takes life to separate them. So you have to begin with life in order to get the use of naturalistic compounds. Life is not the friend. Life in a naturalistic origination is not the friend of time. And time is not the friend of life. Living systems have to be in place and functional rapidly or in a matter of minutes or hours at the most. They begin to biodegrade so you're back to the natural elements again and an impossible scenario. Well, all the right answers. I have a little quiz for you today. I've been looking forward to discussing this with you, and hopefully you know the answer to uh, the questions I'm going to pose. Now, the answers should be rather straightforward, known by every school child, and certainly known by the professors claiming to have all the answers. Well, let's see if we really do have all the answers. The question is very simple. Uh, how long did the Hundred Years' War last in history? Well. You should know the answer to that. The next question is, what country makes Panama hats? Well, certainly we would know the answer to that, wouldn't we? From what animal do we get cat gut? Well, now, these days we're urbanized to the degree that we're not really familiar with the birds and foxes of the field, but we certainly should know the answer to that simple question. The uh, fourth question is, in what month do Russians celebrate the October Revolution? Well, sure you would know the answer to that. Fifth question, what is a camel's hair brush made of? And camel's hair brush is used by artists with very specific results. So what's camel's hair brush made of? Number six, uh, the Canary Islands in the Pacific are named after what animal? Well, duh, as this modern generation would say. Number seven, 
What was King George VI first name? All right. Number eight, what color is a purple finch? Well, certainly we would know the answer to that. Uh, number nine, where are Chinese gooseberries from? Chinese gooseberries, where are they from? Number 10, and finally, what is the color of the black box in a commercial airplane? You may not be familiar with the other geographic locations and the names which date back to scores and sometimes hundreds of years in their etymology and derivation, uh, but certainly you should know the color of the black box. Well, let's get the answer to these questions. Those are the questions. Number one, how long did the Hundred Years' War last? It lasted 116 years. Professor, you got the wrong answer. Number two, what country makes Panama hats? Ecuador. You got the wrong answer. Number three, from what animal do we get cat gut? From sheep and horses. Wrong answer again. Number four, in what month do Russians celebrate the October Revolution? November. Wrong answer again. What is a camel's hair brush made of? Squirrel fur. Wrong answer again. Number six, the Canary Islands in the Pacific are named after what animal? Named after dogs. Wrong answer again. What was King George's sixth first name? His name was Albert. Wrong answer. What color is a purple finch? It's crimson. Number nine, where are Chinese gooseberries from? They're from New Zealand. Wrong answer. Number 10, what's the color of the black box in a commercial airplane? It's orange. You see, we get an idea by transfer of information over a period of time, by inference, we get an idea that something might be one thing when in fact it's another thing all together. This is a program of biblical and scientific research. A program dealing with the issues of life. On this program, we try to answer the four great questions of life that everyone viewing this program globally whether you're a child in India, a professor in Calcutta, a pastor in St. Louis, whether you're an individual discussing international implications in Israel, this program is aired on all continents. And we try to answer the four great questions of life, the questions that have puzzled for millennia. Dating back to the first written records, these questions are implied. Dating back to the history of all nations, these questions have been asked by persons in all stages of their lives. They're discussed in all major universities in the philosophy department. Here they are. They're innately programmed into the very framework and the thought process of man. First great question, who am I? Who are you? Second great question, where did I come from? Life origins. The third great question, what's my purpose here? And the fourth great question, where am I going after this is over? Now just like the 10 questions that I asked you a moment ago, probably almost every person in the audience failed the exam because what was assumed to be true was not true at all. We have a concept that dominates the thought process of this generation. This concept is not only taught in graduate courses at major universities. This concept is caught, taught now in, to elementary students dealing with dinosaurs. I have a little book program for preschoolers and uh, primary schools, first and second and third grade. It envisions the dinosaurs, and it describes how long ago they lived, and even names the eras in, uh, that progressed until we have the dinosaurs dominating and ultimately the mammals to man. This is assumed to be true. Like the questions that I ask, 
Uh, the Canary Islands were named after what animal? Not canary birds at all, but after dogs. Like that question and that answer. What we assume to be true simply because it's been inferred in classes and in propaganda may not necessarily be true. In fact, is not true in this case. The primary concept of life origins today, who am I, where did I come from, what's our personal worth, our identification, is assumed to have arisen from long evolutionary years from single-celled amoeba, protozoa, soa, and bacteria, progressing up through squids and jellyfish to 550 million years ago. Those are assigned years among the trilobites, and then more complicated crustaceans, and then we come to the sharks, and then we come to uh, the time with the introduction of the great reptiles, protoceratops, and then the uh, introduction of the main thesis of life, the great dinosaurs, that's the Mesozoic era, and then the introduction of the Cenozoic era to man. So who am I? It is assumed in the academic profile of this generation that we are a product of, of all that has gone before. Charles Darwin said, and I have a copy of everything that he wrote and is purported to have said uh, that has been published. I have a copy of all. If you're going to critique a man, you need to walk in his shoes. There was a time when I personally espoused Darwinian evolution. So I've walked in his shoes. I understand the frustrations within. I understand why the older he got, the more phobic he became. Because when you dismiss God, uh, like he said, when I realized that the brain of man originated in the squid, I felt as if I had murdered God. Now, you can't kill God, but in his own mind, and imposed upon an entire generation, Darwin killed God when he equated the beginnings of the mind of man with the brain of the squid. Therefore, who am I? Now, we need the right answers, not just an answer. According to evolutionary theory, I'm part squid with a primitive brain. My eyes originated originally with the trilobites. An astounding thing occurred. Uh, early in creation, actually, it was during the first week of creation, but according to evolutionary theory, we have a major problem. And leading evolutionary scholars are puzzled about the eye of the trilobite. It is a compound doublet. It uses uh, calcite and chitin and a, a wavy interface so that the refraction of the light near and far, whatever light is available, can be focused on close, medium, and at a distance all simultaneously in the eye of the trilobite. But according to evolutionary theory, he appeared originally about 530 million years ago. So I'm part sea bug, according to evolutionary theory. And then there are reflexes in the squid and the shark that have uh, been a part of my development. Part of my brain was developed among the reptiles and then the lower primates, and ultimately I appeared as a part of all that has gone before. But that's not what the facts state. We might want a camel's hair brush to be made with camel's hair, but it's not. It's made from the fur of the squirrel. What we have assumed to be the right answer is not the right answer at all. Actually, there is a worldwide layer a Cretaceous layer that engulfs the entire United States, all of Europe, all of Russia, all of China, all the Orient, Israel, all of Africa, all of South America, all of Canada. It engulfs uh, all of Australia. It is a worldwide sedimentary layer, and sedimentary layers are only laid down by water. This demonstrates there was a global flood. And this layer has polystrate fossils. Poly means many. Straight means various layers. Polystrate fossils interlacing it with other layers and others and others until essentially all of this record, which is never found in this sequence worldwide, all of this record is interlaced in a compilation in a world 
statewide flood. So the right answer is not that we're part squid, part trilobite, part reptile. The right answer is that all living systems, like in the Cambrian explosion, uh, thousands upon thousands of varieties and species of life appeared full-blown all at once. Well, that's true of all of creation. The right answer we need, not the suggested answer. Then, who am I? Where did I come from? Life origins. This is a little poster illustrating how the evolutionary imaginary road to life occurred. And the Miller-Urey and Stanley Miller experiment took hydrogen cyanide, ammonia, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, and water, put them all together, and they were able to form certain amino acids. So headlines announced worldwide, life formed in a test tube, exclamation point. Well, that was not true at all. What the truth was, and that's been almost 60 years since that original experiment was carried out and was published in the scientific technical literature, in these 60 years, they've never gone past with all the billions of dollars sent in, spent in scientific experimentation. They've never been able to go past this barrier right here from amino acids. Why? Because when amino acids form under these conditions, and they can form even of the stuff of space, but they form in what's called racemization. That is, they have a left hand and a right hand combination, 50% left hand, 50% right hand. But life only uses left-handed amino acids. Just imagine them fitting together like that. Life only uses the left-handed amino acids. Now you can take the 50% left, 50% right, apply it to a system that's already alive, and that living system dismantles the right hand into the material to reconfigure it into left-handed, but it takes life already existing and functioning to do that. So in the 60 or so years since the Stanley Miller or Miller-Urey experiment has taken place, and the announcement was made, life has been synthesized in a test tube. Nothing, nothing has increased from that barrier. Even though they've synthesized certain RNA molecules, they have not been able to combine that with a system to produce nucleotide the reproduction, sugars, the fatty acids, in order to get a protein, let alone a DNA molecule, let alone a lipid, the fatty acids, let alone a living cell. When we get to the living cell, all the components have to be in place simultaneously, or you have absolutely nothing at all. It biodegrades back to the inorganic compounds, unusable, they're simply refuse, and excrement. There are 60,000 proteins and a hundred different, different specific configurations inside each of these human cells. The odds that those could self-configure are one chance in 10 to the 4,478,296 power. That's in the technical literature. Anything beyond one chance in 10 to the 50th power has zero chance of occurring. Meaning that if we have been taught that life could by random chance or spontaneous generation form out of non-living systems, that is the wrong answer. We need all the right answers. Who am I? Where did I come from? What's my purpose here? Now, according to evolutionary theorists, many who today are heads of chairs at major university, who hold themselves in ultimate esteem, many of those individuals assume that life is as random as they assume the original universe to be. Purposelessness is rampant on every hand, is the experience of all systems. But that really isn't true. God has sent into your life the one with the real answers. No matter what the critics may say, for instance, let me read to you something that I brought to class today that you should know about. During this year honoring Darwin, and again, I have 
all of the articles, all the books, copies of all the letters. I don't have the originals, but I have the entire library that Charles Darwin produced in a lifetime. I have everything that he wrote or that he said that was in print. And if you're going to critique a man, you need to walk in his shoes for a while. I've been there. So I think that gives some qualification to critique. One of the Darwinian advocates in this hour, uh, in the last few months, held a conference. And uh, for 50 years, he's been the scientific public spokesman for uh, documentaries, etc. And he said, the reason we have the exploitation and the greed on planet Earth dates back to the book of Genesis, where man was given dominion of planet Earth. Therefore, man exploits it for what he wants. We have the crime, the chaos, and the exploitation of planet Earth, all pointing back to the book of Genesis. Well, that's not the right answer. While he may get an inference that pleases him, he hasn't read all the book. In fact, here's what the Bible states, and I want you in on this. Back in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, getting back to the original that he was referring to, and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. That is, to take care of it. God made him responsible for his conduct responsible to dress and keep the garden from the very inception that individual speaking for the evolutionary community in a documentary sense doesn't have the right answer doesn't even know how to ask the right question he doesn't know the facts so we need to make sure the facts are genuine the bible begins with man being responsible for his activity and especially in relation to the garden in deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 19 the scripture states, when thou shalt besiege a city a long time, and making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, the future is to be considered. And thou shalt not cut them down, for the trees of the field are man's life to employ them in the siege. He shall not cut them down in the siege because he has to consider the future generations. And then it gets even more intimate than that. And I like this in Deuteronomy 22, 6. If a bird's nest chance to be before thee in the way in any tree or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dame, the mother, sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, thou shall not take the dame with the young. Well, you see, <coughs> we have the clear statement in the Word of God that we're responsible for our conduct. In fact, I wrote at the bottom of this critique, by embracing evolution, we remove accountability to a creator, diminish reflection on conscience, and we sow the seeds of our own destruction. We begin to devour one another as common animals without regard to our origins, our lost estate, or our future accountability. But if all of this is not in place and functional, it begins to biodegrade very rapidly. The evolutionist, and I again used to be in that camp as those who watch the program regularly know, the evolutionist asked for billions of years of evolutionary time, tens of billions of years of evolutionary time in order to get one single spark of life. Well now, time is not the friend of the evolutionist. For living systems, even if you did get the amino acids, uh, which will not form naturally in a left-handed configuration, lined by an intelligent source, and especially with a capital S. So today's program is all the right answers. In order for living systems to work, everything must be in place simultaneously. The living cell requires not only the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid, requires not only the RNA, the protein synthesis factory, and the uh, energizing apparatus. It requires a membrane. It requires the proteins to all be in place so that the transfer of that information in the dividing of the cellular structure can produce an organ that fuses only left-handed amino acids 
Yeah, they form together left and right handed and it takes life to separate them so you have to begin with life in order to get the use of naturalistic compounds life is not the friend life in a naturalistic origination is not the friend of time and time is not the friend of life living systems have to be in place and functional rapidly or in a matter of minutes or hours at the most they begin to biodegrade so you're back to the natural elements again and an impossible all the right answers we have an extended period of time lasting for decades so far in which the evolution creation controversy has been on cutting edge debate and we have an academic posture in the educational system that essentially rules out even a mention of intelligent design and specifically a reference to a specific creator and uh, thus we have an impasse and the imperialized dogma has stated because its imperial mandate has stated that it must be naturalistic however the answers are still missing you see there's empirical science where you run field examination and laboratory experiments to see what really is there then there's imperial dogma that is often superimposed to determine that you can't use all the data you have to isolate everything to a naturalistic interpretation no matter how much it appears to be complex and design